my lamb for sacrifice, and the guy go, oh, well, let us inspect it. And so somebody walk over and go, oh, no, sorry, see that one hair? No, I'm sorry, yeah, this, this lamb will never do. Well, yeah, this is a good, no, no, I'm sorry, this lamb is not approved. You may not use this lamb for sacrifice. That dove there, one of his wings is a centimeter shorter than the other. I'm sorry, you cannot use that. Okay, well, what am I going to do? Well, you're going to have to go and buy a, a pre-approved lamb in the booth next to me. Well, what do I do with this lamb? Well, you can sell that lamb to us. Okay, fine. So how much? 20 bucks. That la- the lamb is worth more. No, I'm sorry, 20 bucks. That's what we're paying for lambs today is 20 bucks. We, we've got more lambs than we could use. It's 20 bucks. So they give you your 20 bucks. You go to the next line. I'm here to buy a pre-approved lamb. Okay, great, awesome. Do you want to pick one out or do you just want us to pick one out? Just pick one, whatever. At this point, I'm not really in the same mood I was before. And, and so, okay, well, great. Well, here we bring out a lamb. It looks exactly like the lamb I just dropped off over there. Oh, yeah, because we pulled that one hair out, and he's fine. So, okay, how much is that lamb? That'll be $30. I, I just got paid $20 for my lamb over there. You're going to charge me $30 for this lamb. It looks like the same exact lamb. Well, yeah, it's just, you know, lambs are more expensive over here than they are over there. Okay, fine. So, oh, I'm sorry, sir, we can't use that money. What's wrong with my money? It can, we can only use temple money when you're buying sacrifices. Well, this is all the money I have. Well, you need to go over to that booth over there. That's the, that's the money changers, and they will take your unapproved money, and they will turn it into temple money. I'll be right back. I need $30 in temple money. Oh, no problem. That'll be $40. What? Well, yeah, because, well, there's, you know, it's, it just costs more. I mean, the temple money is worth more than your non-temple money, and you want to you wanna do this right, don't you? You know. Funk. <laughs> What's happened to his heart of worship? I want a heart of worship, but it's all about the stupid they had literally taken what Jesus meant to be a worshipful, God-honoring thing, and they had completely made it just to be about, let's see how much we can get out of this. Let's see what we can do for ourselves out of this. Okay. <laughs> it's not about having bake sales in the church, y'all. It's not about having a yard sale in the back of the church. That's not what this is about. So, I mean, I've been in those churches where, you know, we, we, back when we would travel... Uh, and, you know, you always you have your CDs because you want people to, you know, to, to be able to take your music home with you. And that's one of your sources of income. I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Peace All, you can't sell your CDs or any of your merchandise inside the church building. It's like not in the sanctuary. No, no, not in the sanctuary, not in the hallway, not in the bathroom, nowhere. You have to sell it from outside. It's like, okay, would you like us to go off the property maybe? I mean, I'm happy to take the trailer across the street to the local bar and, you know, we'll sell it. It's like, well, you know, the Bible says that Jesus cleansed the temple. You missed the whole point. That wasn't what Jesus was doing. What Jesus was doing was, my father's house has a major purpose. It's to be a house of prayer, and you've made it be all about profit. Now, let's tie all this together with what God really spoke to me. I've always believed, first of all, I know that I'm a balanced person. I like symmetry. If you notice the tables, they're in rows. If you notice the tablecloths, there's no blue cloth next to a blue cloth. There's no yellow. If you'll notice in the little flower arrangements, there are the same number of flowers on your table. There's the same number of candies on your table as there is on everybody else's table. I like balance. And I'm a bit weird about it. But fellowship is hugely important to me. Worship is hugely important to me. Discipleship is hugely important to me. Those are the three things that make up our church. Those are the three things that I believe the Holy Spirit wants me to just really, to really stay with. Now, sometimes on some Sundays, we spend more time fellowshipping, sometimes more time worshiping, sometimes more discipling. I I get that. But for the most part, I feel a balance about that. And I'd even talk to the young woman who did the prophetic art about, man, I just have this vision. I just want you to draw this, this really cool painting because I want that to be something that our church, we ever look at it. And, and, uh, but I've always had this in my mind. I've always known there's, a, there's something missing there, Mike. Well, I always, I mean, it's just understood we're going to pray every once in a while. I mean, come on. 
This so convicted me. What I was at last week, and then this message today, it so convicted me. Mike, is my house a house of prayer? Is Gateway a house of prayer? Well, God, I know we've got some great prayer warriors. Yes, but is the house a house of prayer? Are you, are you as pastor, are you a person of prayer? Are you praying? Are you praying? Are you praying about all this? And I was like, not like I want to be. Now, look, I'm not, I'm not beating myself up over it. Everybody knows here, I work really hard. I try really hard. It's not a lack of trying. It's just a lack of, of focus. And so our focus is going to really noticeably shift where prayer is the central hub that those other three things float off of. One of the things we're going to do is um, uh, on Monday night, beginning, I think I have a slide here. I don't know if you can see that very well. I'm inviting all of you to join me here every Monday night, not, 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 next, not tomorrow night and not the next Monday night, but Monday night, April the 9th, from 5 to 6. I would love for you to come and join me for a time of prayer. I've asked some people to become my daily prayer partners. I've asked some people to become prayer partners for me over the week. And, and I may be asking even more of y'all, so just be, be ready. Be thinking about that when Mike asks me, will I say yes or will I say no? Because if it's, if it's, not, about, if it's not bathed in prayer, if it's not based out of prayer, earlier I had you look across the table at somebody and just go, hey, man, it's great seeing you. That's the beginning of prayer. Uh, last week when we did our little children's message and uh, we had uh, the delightful young man who was telling me all about this or maybe it was Jaden telling me about this book that I have about dangerous things guys do. And, you know, th- that wonderful communication that we were having, that's, that's what prayer is. God, let's talk about today. Let's talk about you. Let's talk about whatever. What are you thinking? And God says, well, what are you thinking? Well, he already knows what I'm thinking. Yeah, but he likes to talk to you. He doesn't want to read your mind. He wants to talk to us. So as we move forward, um, I just really believe that God is calling us to emphasize like we've never emphasized before that gateway is a house of prayer. And here's how I'm going to end this time this morning. Um, I want to just ask that you would pray with me. Now, look, lunch is already over there. It's delicious. There's uh, 10 pounds of pork barbecue, 5 pounds of turkey barbecue. It is all uh, priest approved. I'm just kidding about the pork, obviously. There's, there's plenty of food. There's desserts. There's iced tea. There's lemonade. You don't have to leave to eat lunch. So don't, don't be in a hurry. I don't want to ask you just, to, just to, to spend the next five minutes. Five minutes. For some of us, five minutes in prayer seems like an eternity. For some of you, it's like, man, I can't even say hello to God good in five minutes. Okay, whatever. I want to ask you to spend five, the next five minutes praying for just a couple of things. First of all, I want to pray for your prayer appetite. God, would you increase my prayer appetite? Now, look, God, I'm not asking you to put some huge, horrible thing in my life that I have to pray about more. It's not what I'm asking. God, that's not what we're asking. Would you just increase my appetite for prayer? You know, they say if you don't drink water, the best thing you can do is drink water, and then you will start being thirsty for water. How many of y'all drink enough water? How many of y'all just, I'm just never thirsty for water. They say if you drink water, you will become thirsty for water. I promise you, if we begin to pray, we will become thirsty for prayer. So first thing, just asking God, would you increase my my thirst for prayer? Second thing, I'm just going to be real selfish and say, would you pray for me? Would you just pray for me? Just pray for me, however God leads you to. I'm not even going to tell you how. Just pray for me. And then the third thing is to pray for our church. We're not here by accident, and we're not here for no good reason. We, we are here for a reason, y'all. And, and uh, we've, we've seen people uh, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, um, 
last weekend, actually, um, Tracy, um, that has come several times, she came, she and her mom came, Tracy McQuarrie, uh, last week, she and the guy that she was coming with, they got married last weekend, and it was really cool. She's a teacher, and she has three kids from a previous marriage, and uh, Tracy was in my youth group when I was at First Baptist, and uh, the first Sunday that they came and visited, and we took them out to lunch, she said, you know, I never told you this, but you remember when I finished up college, and I asked you to write a letter of recommendation, and I'm like, not really, and she said, well, you did, I got the job, I still work there, and I never said thank you, and, and, uh, and I was just kind of cool, I was like, oh man, thank you, God, you used me somewhere, I mean, that's amazing, and, and then, um, uh, after that, and, and so they would come and, and not come, and, and you know, here, it's a s- t- typical situation that many of you understand all too well. Kids are here this weekend, and next weekend they're at, at the dad's house, and this weekend they're in. and so it's just hard sometimes to get committed to a church and, and all this other stuff, and then, and then she's, they, they just stopped coming, and, and that, that was okay. I mean, you know, I'd run into her at the store, and we'd love on each other and all that good stuff, and I, about a month ago, I just sent her a text. I said, you know, you get the church email, and look, um, I, I, you're, obviously you're plugged in somewhere else, and that's awesome, and if you want to keep getting the church email, I'm fine with that, but if you're like me, and you've got like 5,000 5, emails coming in your mailbox every day, I'll be happy to stop sending you that one, if, you know, if you're not even reading it and whatever, and she, she responded back, and she said, well, I'm glad this, rem- this gives me the opportunity to tell you that me and, and she named his name, we're actually getting married, and uh, we found a church that, that both of us are kind of getting to start over fresh in, and we've gotten, we're getting plugged into that church, and that's where we're getting married, and our kids love that church. But I'd love for you to keep us on your email list, and here's why. Your church loved me when no other church loved me. Your church Let me and my little kids come in there late, early, whatever you loved on me. Your children's ministry loved on me. The the men and women in your church, nobody made me feel like, oh, that girl is back. Church, you did that. You did that. God has us here for a reason. If it's just for Tracy, I'm okay with that. But I think he has us there for so many more. And so much more. And so pray for your own personal appetite of prayer. Pray for me. And then just pray for this church body. So I'll say go. I'm going to play a little prayer. And then I'll end it in about five minutes. Now, if five minutes seems like 5,000 years, I'm sorry. Just put your head down. And we'll wake you up when it's over. God. <laughs> Jesus, you said your father's house. You said your house was to be called a house of prayer. And I've already said to you this week, I've not always looked at it that way. I I want it to be a house of fellowship and I want it to be a house of pure worship and I want it to be a house of, of discipling people out of the word. But more than anything, I want it to become a house of prayer. Holy Spirit, lead us. Lead us as we begin this this prayer emphasis today. We We just want to be able to be what you want us to be. And I absolutely believe that you want us to be a house of prayer.